okay so All right, so this particular video is whereby a person actually drops a stone onto a calm pond and we will see water a wave. This is into the, water. the ripples. What? All right, these are the ripples that we normally see when we drop a item into a calm pond. So water waves is actually um, that move outwards from what we see here, waves that move outward from the center. All right, so there are actually three types of uh, example of wave that we will discuss in this particular topic, which is water wave, light wave, and also sound wave. Okay, so the first thing is we need to understand what is waves about. So example is this few particular, all right, this few pictures, we have a person holding a string, which is actually tied to this particular metal, but over here is actually a ring of some sort. So uh, this particular ring al allows this cord to move up and down. This is a slinky spring. All right, for form force, when we go back to the lab after we finish the heat chapter, uh, some of the activities inside this particular chapter, I will still let you guys carry out. Uh. So um, this is an example of a ripple tank, and this is actually a tuning fork. So let's play the video first. Click on each graphic. You have just observed a few vibrating systems. Okay, so what we see in this particular picture, all right, from the first one on top left, when we actually move, this person actually moved the cord up and down, like for example, this situation, if I let it move up and down in a slow motion, let me restart that. So when this goes up, this particular part, all right, it will actually cause a vibration, all right? Vibration which will make the rest of all these uh, particles, all right, I'm going to use the word particles, to actually move. So when it continues to oscillate up and down, all right, when it continues to oscillate up, up and down, the rest of the particles will also move. It moves upwards and downwards, okay? But the thing is that the disturbance start from this particular point, from this position. And the, dis the, sorry, the disturbance actually transfers to the rest of the particle, okay? Again, uh, the disturbance starts from the left side and it will actually move the rest of the di disturbance to the other end. Okay, so this is an example of a wave. So wave is actually caused by a disturbance or to be more precise, it's actually caused by a vibration. So let's go to back to this particular video. All right, so the disturbance for the top left is actually the person, all right, moving the string up and down. The mo disturbance on the top right is actually the hand pushing it in front and bring it back uh, backwards again for this one it's the ripple tank all right this particular ripple tank source that is actually causing the disturbance and for the tuning fork is was just now the heating part okay vibrating systems produce waves so the statement that was mentioned here vibrating systems produce waves this particular statement saying that vibrating system produces wave, vibrating or oscillating system produces wave. So in this statement, as long as the system is vibrating or oscillating, it can actually produce waves. So if you were to recall, what other things that you know is vibrating or can oscillate? Can your response a little bit inside the chat box? What actually causes vibration and also oscillation that you all know from based on whatever you have learned previously? Can think of anything? Uh? Pendulum, good, Daniel.
external force. What kind of external force, Jairaj? Car engine. Hmm? Okay. Oscillation of the fan. All right. Good. Go. Go. All right. Chongwei, correct. Speaker, guitar, string. Yes. So can you go a little bit more specific? Go something more fundamental. Something more basic. What else? I'm looking over to the side uh, because using dual screen. So the chat box is on the other side. Something fundamental. What is fundamental in our universe? Almost atoms vibrating. Yes, good. Atom is actually one of the fundamental ones. And if you were to look at the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Liquid move very, vibrate, uh, very vigorously. Uh, sorry, gas moves very vigorously. Liquid is vibrating but it cannot move around too much solid state actually vibrates at its own position all right it's also oscillating this are all back to atoms all right atoms also have its own vibration so atoms actually create out wave of its own so this particular statement you all have to be very aware of it okay so we humans also we can actually create out waves because our mindset our whole entire body is actually consists of cells which it's come from the fundamental atoms also so there is still wave coming out from all of us okay so these are a few things regarding wave that generally for you all to know okay So here, all right, this is based on the textbook uh, for the rest of uh, for the form force. Form 5, I think you should have the soft copy of the textbook, right? All right, to study the vibration of a ripple tank and vibration of a tuning fork. So attach a deeper until it is spherically, uh, the spherical end touches the surface of the water. Observe the surface of the water when the motor does not vibrate or the motor vibrates. So... I'm going to show you this using this particular simulation. Okay, now I notice I keep using the word particular. I bet Joel and Rapika is laughing right now. It's here, we're not keeping track. We're not, I, we're not keeping I, track. I know you're not keeping track, but the thing is that somehow, mm, I already know the thing, <laughs> but I can't help it. So whatever. Lah. Finally. All right, I'm using a simulation over here. So let me close the sound a little bit. So let's look from the side view. What I'm showing you right now is actually water waves. All right, from the bottom part here, this is actually a water wave. So this is almost a simulation uh, similar to the ripple tank. When, okay, observe the surface of the water when the water does not vibrate. So over here, we will see that the water is actually calm, okay? So when I actually let it vibrate, okay, for example, like this, what happened to the surface of the water? The surface of the water will actually have a sign. It, it, it looks like a wave from what you guys understand. If from the top, top view, we will see ripples like this, okay? But from the side view, this is actually how the water waves looks like moving from the source of the vibration. So the source of the vibration is actually this part where the pipe is actually dripping down. All right. It's similar to a dipper with the spherical end touching the surface of the water. Okay. So here, when the motor does not vibrate, it is actually calm water. But when a motor starts to vibrate, the water will actually move up and down. So that is an example of a uh, water wave. So holding a tuning fork, okay. Normally when we hold a tuning fork, uh, I don't have a simulation for this. This one I have to go back to the school. So if we hold a tuning fork, for those of you who have uh, learned music, okay, you know that if you do not vibrate it, you don't touch it, it will not vibrate it at all. Okay, there will be no sound. But the minute you actually touch it or hit it with something, it will actually you can actually hear a sound all right so that is actually producing a sound but what 
is being mentioned here is that the water waves, we can see water wave when there's disturbance. When there is no water waves, when there is no water wave, you cannot see, it's actually a calm uh, pond or a calm water, but only when there is vibration. All right, when there's vibration, there's source of vibration, then only we can have water wave. When there's no source of vibration, we will not have water waves. Same thing goes to sound, okay? So let's just say, for example, I'm using this, okay? This is a speaker. So if I play a single sound, I forgot the name, closed it. If I play a single sound, then we can hear. And then you can see that it's actually moving away. So if I were to continue, let it play, we will keep hearing the sound. All right. When there is a source of vibration, only we can hear the sound. So over here, the source of vibration for the sound comes from the speaker itself. What is vibrating at the speaker? So you play, I'm going to play again for you all to hear. Look at this part. All right, it's the diaphragm of the, the speaker that is actually causing the sound. And when I stop this particular speaker, there's no sound, there's no wave. So wave can only occur when there is vibration, oscillation, something disturbing the medium. The medium that I'm talking about is either the air, the water, or it could be solid materials. All, right? All these are considered as medium as well. If let's just say I don't flip my fingers, you cannot hear the flipping sound. But because I'm disturbing the air around me by doing this, then only you can hear the sound. Okay, so what is wave? Wave is actually, um, okay, I don't want to use my definition. I'm going to use the, the book step definition. Okay, this one I'm just going to skip. Since I already uh, mentioned this, all right, uh, still introduction. Water waves actually carry energy. Water Example waves carry energy too. Observe, observe the effect of energy carried by water waves. Alright, this is an example of the tsunami situation that happened quite some time ago. I think you guys were still small. So over here, we can see when the waves come in, all right, wave, if it's too strong, the water wave, if it's too strong, it can be destructive as well, okay? So wave, all right, wave is a process of transferring energy. The most important thing about wave, this is the definition of wave. Okay, wave is actually a process of transferring the energy from one location to another, which is produced by an oscillating system of vibrating. All right, if we base on what we have in the textbook for the definition of wave, because you know we all always go back to the text textbook for definition. Let's see. Okay. Okay, they don't have the definition here. Okay, so for me, what is the definition based on my memory from KBSM textbook? Wave is actually a transfer of energy without transferring method all right um the definition that i recall from kbsm textbook is wave is a transfer of energy without transferring method so how is this being mentioned this actually means that because if you re recall back in science um energy cannot be created it cannot be destroyed so energy can only change its form from one uh, type of energy to another type of energy. Okay, so again, I'm trying to get a simulation to work. When wave move, it doesn't transfer matter, which means the solid material 
all right a solid particle or we're talking about liquid or we're talking about uh, gas particles it should not move away but in actual situation obviously in real life situation it does move away la, because realistically it get pushed okay so let's go back to this this simulation will explain even clearer on my particular statement now when you see all these particles is connected all right there's two four six eight nine all right nine red color particles and then we have the green color one so over here i'm going to show you the time of reference damping none ruler okay that by yeah all right over here if i were to move all of these particles are actually static right now so they possess gravitational potential energy okay because when an object doesn't move from a certain position on uh, from the surface every single object possesses gravitational potential energy and when i disturb this by moving it up okay what happened is when i disturb it to make it move up the rest of it will start moving so when the rest of it starts moving it actually transfers from gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy from the left side of the simulation all the way to the right side where there's a g-clamp there but if you look at the particles itself all right if i were to bring this back down okay the most is the the let's just say the green color one the green color one all it does is going up coming back to the equilibrium and then later on it will go back down okay it will not move towards the right hand side of the disturbance what does what do i mean it doesn't move towards the right hand side when i the all this particular this green color marble right actually does is it will go up and will come back down making it slow and let it play okay so over here you see uh this is the source of the disturbance initially all the particles are at rest having gravitational potential energy then after that what happens is okay, let me hmm. what happened is that we can see it vibrating up and down right when it see it vibrating up and up and down okay i want to show something because the graph is not so nice right now much better okay we can see that the vibration the energy is actually moving from the source all the way to the other end and then the green color marble is actually going up and down up and down the definition of wave which is transfer of energy without transferring matter means that the energy is actually moving from this position towards the right hand side that is how the wave is moving that's called a wave profile but the matter is the green color particle the green color particle is still moving up and down but the wave energy is moving towards the right side okay so this is what it meant by wave transfers energy without transferring matter because all the particle does is continue vibrating up and down at its position it will still go back to its position when everything stops okay when everything stops it will still go back to its original position the green color particle will not move out okay this is ideal case remember whenever i discuss something in physics whenever we are learning something we assumed it as an ideal case all right because in real life case if it's really a particle over there slowly slowly it will get pushed it okay but then we are learning ideal case right now so up to here are you guys okay don't have to voice out just send a message inside then can already especially on the form four sir because form four this is new to you guys form five is a refresher course actually all right so let's proceed okay Click on the motor to start the vibrator. What do you see on the water surface? Water. 
the waves are produced. What is the direction of propagation of the water wave? All right, it's moving from the source of vibration the of towards the left. Is from right to left. The leaf represents a water particle. How does the water particle move? You see, in this situation, the water particle moves up and down. I disturb the thing too much. Okay, so what do we see on the water surface? Water wa water waves is actually produced because the medium here is water. Okay, the disturbance is actually on water, so therefore the water waves is actually the water. Then, what is the direction of the wave propagation from the right towards the left? From the source of vibration away moving away so the energy will always be from the source of the vibration moving away from it so the leaf represents water particles and the water particles actually move up and down right as what you can see over here from the one that i'm actually drawing right now okay from here from right to left this is a wave propagation propagation means movement all right so wave propagation means the direction of the wave that is actually moving and then the leaf is actually moving up and down okay so this particular direction based on mathematics this two line is actually perpendicular 90 degrees to each other so take note about this later i think the next subtopic we will talk about the this particular direction okay as the wave passes by does the leaf move together with the wave Again, this is ideal case. No, the leaf does not move together with the wave. Instead, it moves up and down about its initial position. Waves transfer energy as they move along the water particles. However, the waves do not carry the water particles along with them. That is why the leaf still remains at its initial position. This shows that waves transfer energy without transferring matter. Okay, so the leaf will not move away, right? Instead, it will actually oscillate. In a way, this is called considered as oscillation. It moves up and down about its initial position, or we can also consider this as an equilibrium position. Okay, wave transfers energy as they move along the water particles, but the wave will not carry the particles away along together with them. So one conclusion that I want you all to remember is wave is a transfer of energy without transferring the matter. Okay, so write that particular statement down because that is the definition of the wave. Okay. All right, wave transfers energy without transferring matter. So this is the definition for it. Okay, over here, if let's just say, for example, uh, when a stone is dropped into a pond, what wave will pro be produced based on this particular diagram? What waves will we be produced? Okay, as usual, type into the chat box, whoever that's actually using laptop or using your phone directly. If you're going to multitask during my extra class, my as well no need to join the extra class. Uh. Water waves, good. All right. Water waves are produced. So the water wave propagates on the surface of the water. The direction of propagation of the water wave is from here. All right. The stone is being dropped. So the direction of the wave propagation will be moving from the left towards the right. So the cork represents the water particle. So it does not move together with a water wave and instead it actually moves up and down about its initial position only. So what is being transferred by the wave? Before everything happens, the pond is actually calm. So when there's a disturbance, which is the stone, 
it creates water wave and we see water wave moving away from the disturbance from left to right then what is transferred by the wave energy okay we don't bother whether what kind of energy over here we just say it as energy so water uh, sorry wave transfers energy as the as it moves along the wave particles however the wave do not carry the water particles along with them so the conclusion once again is wave transfers energy without transferring matter transferring means it does not move all right wave moves the energy away but it will not move the particles again this is for ideal situation okay now let me just is true okay this particular activity all right waves are produced when the medium vibrates at a fixed position propagation of wave transfers the energy from one medium another again repeating uh repeating what's mentioned for the record i borrowed this particular powerpoint slides from another physics teacher okay so that's why there are some repetition over and over again Sun is a form of wave. Click the hand to beat the drum. What happens to the flame? Why? The flame will flicker. Sound waves transfer energy from the vibrating drum to the candle flame, causing the flame to flicker. Click on the start button. As the wave passes through the air, do the air particles move along with the wave? So you can see that over here, when it actually touch here, the wave, no, the can you see this, this part? Okay, so, all right, when the drum, the hand actually beats the drum, the flame will actually flicker. This is because the sound wave transfer energy from the vibrating drum to the candle flame, causing the flame to flicker. And remember over here, the one that is actually transferring energy for this particular situation, it's the air particles. Okay, so in terms of air particles, all right, this is a simulation I have over here. I'm going to change it to particles. All right. All these are air particles, assuming that they are nicely arranged, okay? Because we know gas particles, uh, air particles and gas particles, they are supposed to move very randomly um, all over the place. Okay, so if I were to play a tone, so watch how it moves. Okay, I'm putting this at slow motion already. Yeah? So I'm going to disturb this again. All right. Then this is the disturbance of energy. Do you notice this is moving away? Okay. So I'm going to keep letting it move. So you can see there are compression and refraction happening right now. Okay. So this is the disturbance. And the wave is actually moving away. When you look at this particular simulation, you can see, all right, let's focus on this particular red dot. When we focus at this red dot, I'm going to mute it for a while. When we focus on this red dot, look that it is actually moving away and then it comes back again, moving away and comes back again. All right, so this that you see, all this line that is actually moving further and further away, these are actually called wave movement, all right, the propagation of wave, whereby the energy is moving from electricity right to kinetic energy and it's actually passing through all these air particles okay so when it's actually passing through all these air particles the energy actually move further away but look at all the red color particles 
it goes further away and it comes back again. It goes further away and it comes back again. Okay, so this is what this statement is trying to say. Sound wave transfers energy from the vibrating drum to the candle flame, causing the flame to flicker. The disturbance at the back of the drum vibrates and cause the disturbance in the air particles inside the drum and it will disturb the air particles that is outside also. So this transfers the energy from the source of disturbance, which is actually the hand, towards all the energy of the molecules inside and it will finally cause the flame to flicker. All right. So wave again, repeating a very important statement is that wave transfers energy without transferring the matter. Okay, ideal case. So if the wave passes through the air, does the air particles move along? All right, ideal case, no. The air particles vibrates about the initial position only. So it will move further away and it comes back. It moves further away and it's come back. All right, again, ideal case. The orange particle represents an air the air particle transfers energy to the next particle, but stays about its initial position. Thus, as the wave passes through the air, energy is transferred without the transferring of matter. Alright, so as the air particle transfers energy to the next particle because it collides, Right in chapter two, you learn about collision. So when one object collides with another object, it will actually let the the energy possessed by first object will actually transfer to the other object. So same things over here. Uh, air particles when they collide, when it hits another particle, it will transfers the energy. All right, but it will still stay about its initial position because it's keep on being heated by other air particles as well. So as the wave passes through the air, the energy is transferred from one particle to another particle until it hits the flame, but the air particles does not uh, move, right? It does, sorry, it does not move away from it. Again, ideal case. Okay, so this one, I think I'll just skip through it. Okay, so here, all right, energy transfers through sea wave, water wave, can be actually very huge, especially an example of the tsunami situation. Tsunami's disturbance is actually from earthquake under the sea. Okay, tsunami can only happen when there's an earthquake under the sea. Okay, either earthquake or uh, a bomb exploding under the sea. Lah, okay, so over here, normally tsunami happens because of earthquake. And as you can see at the top part, all right, the before picture, this is before the tsunami happens, when a tsunami comes, a water wave can actually wash out all these particular houses. So these houses can only be, be destroyed because the water wave has very high energy level. Right? So here actually proves that energy is transferred in the water wave. Okay? That causes, you see, uh, during tsunami, the energy carried by water wave from the sea can cause great damage to the surrounding. So most of the energy comes from the wind blowing across the surface of the sea. That is if it's just a normal one. Nah? Okay. Alright, so up to here, can I ask for the first part, what do you understand so far? Okay, please respond to me inside the chat box. What did I keep emphasizing for the first almost 40 minutes of the lesson? Wave is a transfer of energy, but like the particles, it doesn't move. All right. Thank you, Ravika. Okay. Ideal case. <laughs> Chirong, the ideal case cannot write in SPM. Ah. Chongwei. For gamma, you're gonna get it tomorrow. No, oh, to get Chung Wei only. He's the one that brought it up. Me and Joel are innocent too. Okay, all right. Let's proceed with the next one. Give him more homework. I'll give him more tasks in class instead. All right. Let's continue on with the state. Uh, the type of the waves. 
okay over here all right um first thing is actually wave profile so please either underline at your textbook please underline at your textbook or you write down wherever that you're writing right now again a reminder please do not just stare and listen to the handphone or to the laptop but make sure you have a paper and pen or your notebook and pen with you to copy down whatever that i'm mentioning uh, or else it's just going to be a waste of time for you to attend my extra class okay if you're just going to sit down there with your headset on and not writing down anything or not focusing then just leave okay all right wave profile right wave profile definition is the shape uh, why shape of the slinky spring okay let's go to definition from the textbook okay memang dia bagi this but normally they won't ask for this definition lah. okay wave profile is an example of the shape of the slinky spring as the wave propagates through it wave profile over here is for example okay wave profile is me moving here this is considered as a wave profile this particular movement this particular disturbance okay will be considered as the wave profile so the wave profile for this part uh wait I suddenly want to laugh by myself inside this particular room already. Z, Chongwei! Okay. For the Form 5 who's actually have no idea what's going on, mm, go and find the Form 4 lah, huh? When I disturb this, okay, when I disturb this, we see that the wave energy is transferred from the pl plier, okay, moving from the left towards the right. Right, the energy is moving. This wave is actually what we call as a wave profile. Okay, so wave profile is the shape of the slinky spring as it the wave propagates through it. So for here, it's actually moving towards the right. The profile of the wave is moving towards the right. Have you all learned about uh, trigonometry functions? Uh? Have you learned about trigonometry functions for the form four? Form five, I know definitely have. I've seen it already. Have you learned about sine graph, cos graph, tangent graph? Yes. Okay. Then have a look at this. Look at the wave profile. H have you seen it yet? The sine graph and the cosine graph. Okay, so which means you haven't learned it before, lah, but I think the Form 5 already learned it already. So this graph that you see that the wave is actually moving up and down, later on you will know it as uh, the sine graph. It will look similar to the sine graph. Okay, so... Alright, but don't bother. We are not going to use the, the, the equation anyway for the graphs. Okay, progressive wave. Wave is characterized... Uh, form 4, tak payah understand for now. Alright, from 5, you already learned the sine and cosine graph. So you can see the graph shape over there. Alright, so from 4, at the moment, I will take note about this that you haven't learned it. So later on, only lah, okay? So here, um, wave, there's two types of category. Okay, I'm not talking about example of waves. Example of wave would be water wave, light wave, and sound wave. Okay, now let's continue. Okay, um, okay there are... Rebecca. <sighs> okay. Um, let's get back to the types of waves. Okay. Uh, examples of wave uh, that we're going to be discussing in this chapter is water wave, light wave, and sound wave. There are obviously a lot of other types of waves. All right. Seismic wave. We have heat wave. Those are also wave as well. Okay. Then... They actually characterize the wave to a few categories, right? The first category is between progressive wave and stationary wave. Progressive wave is, actually, uh, is the wave profile propagates with time along the direction of wave propagation. Focus. Okay, example, this situation again. As 
in this particular simulation, we see that the wave is propagating from the left towards the right. And then over here, we're not talking about the uh, particles moving up and down already. Uh, okay, that particular, that, 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 part of a uh, wave that the definition of wave which is transferring energy without transferring matter all right that one we leave it aside already so now we're going to focus on the types of wave so a progressive wave based on this definition is a wave profile propagates with time along the direction of propagation of wave so what does this mean example of a progressive wave would be like this the wave keeps changing every single time it's not fixed. The position of the particles is keep on moving along as the time goes. But what happens when I fix the end?
this is an example of a standing wave. The, the, the wave is actually vibrating up and down among its position only. All right. In comparison to this one, this one is a progressive wave. This is a progressive wave. It moves away from the source of disturbance. Standing wave is just moving up and down. Okay, so I hope this one can show you guys more clearer on uh difference between standing wave and progressive wave. Okay, I cannot find a stinky spring at the moment over here from my simulations online. Um, so I'm just going to show the form force when we go back to class. Okay, to compare the longitudinal wave and transverse wave, normally we will have to hold one end of the stinky spring and give a sharp push front and back. Okay, so that it can actually pass through the energy from the hand towards the fixed end. Okay. I'm just going to okay. I'm just gonna let it play so for you guys to see. So the blue dot represents a particle. Much in the better, spring. I guess. Click the start button to get the waves in motion. Now should be better, right? What is the direction of propagation of the wave? What is the direction of vibration of the spring particle? The wave propagates to the right and the spring particles vibrate back and forth. What can you say about the direction of vibration of the particle in relation to the direction of propagation of the wave? So here's actually the disturbance. The wave energy is actually moving towards the right. Back and forth or vibrates parallel to the direction of propagation of the wave. Okay, so here we see that the wave profile is moving from the left the source of disturbance, which is here, towards the right-hand side. So we consider this as a wave propagation, wave movement. Okay. So when the wave propagates from the left towards the right, and I put a particle over here, and this particular particle vibrates towards the right, left, right, left, because it's being pushed. All right, it's being pushed by the slinky spring. So the the movement of the particle is moving. Sorry, the movement of the particle is. The blue dot represents a particle okay. in the spring. Why suddenly it starts again? Click the start button to get the Ignore waves that, in then. motion. Okay, the wave propagates towards the right, and the spring particles vibrate back and forth, and both are parallel to each other. Moving, the wave is moving left and right to on the x-axis. And then the particle is also moving on the x-axis also, vibrating about its equilibrium position towards the right and then back to left, right, left, right, left. So they have the same movement, okay? When they have the same movement, they are considered as parallel to each other. Now, another one is here, this one. Okay, so here, this particular uh, question, this one used to be a SPM question, all right? The movement, the disturbance of the source is actually moving back and forth moment. And then we see that the slinky spring has a compression. C stands for compression and R stands for rarefaction. So how does a wave particle move for this example, longitudinal wave? Longitudinal wave is whereby the direction of the wave particles is parallel all right, to the direction of the particles, meaning means that the wave is moving from the source towards the right-hand side all right, through the compression and rare fraction of the spring. And then the particles are also moving towards the right and left, right and left. These two directions, direction of the wave particle here... Let me just use a highlighter. All right, direction of the wave propagation and the direction of the vibration, they are both on x-axis, therefore they are parallel to each other. So the wave that travels along the spring consists of a series of compression and rarefaction. All right, consists of a series of compression and rarefaction. 
and wavelength. Okay, wavelength, that one I'll introduce later on. Okay, so this is the definition for longitudinal wave. A wave in which the direction of the particles, right, direction of the vibration of the particle, first part, in the medium, is parallel to the direction of the propagation of the wave. So these three keywords must be in there for the definition of longitudinal wave. Okay, longitudinal wave, if we were to see the situation uh, for light wave, sound wave, longitudinal wave example would be sound wave. Okay, sound wave is a very good example of longitudinal wave because it's a series of compression and rare fraction. Okay. Over here again, sound wave. All right. Sound wave is a series of compression and rare fraction of the air particles around us. Okay. Please do, do take note one thing. Slinky spring is not a example of a wave. Okay. I repeat, slinky spring is not an example of the wave. Slinky spring is just an apparatus that we use in the lab to introduce longitudinal wave and transverse wave to student all right do not show me do not write slinky spring as an example of a wave later in spm or in your exam paper all right next using the same slinky spring but right now we are using another type of movement huh? okay so right now instead of going front and back Okay, the movement right now is moving up and down. All right, and we can see the wave profile over here. Energy is still moving from the source of the disturbance, which is the hand, towards the other end. Okay, so here, all right, wave is actually moving from left to right. And look at the red color dot. The red color dot is actually going up and down. Okay. So in this particular situation, it is an example like this. The wave is moving from left to right, and the red dot is actually going up and down, up and down only. Okay, that is an example of how wave move for sound wave and oh, uh, sorry, water waves. Okay, from the side view of the water wave. Look at this particular shape. It is actually moving up and down. Okay, same thing as what is being shown here. Light wave, light wave, very difficult to see. Lah. Light wave is also similar to water wave as well. Okay, this particular example. I think my headset should have rose up. Okay, over here, the blue color line represents the wave propagation. Okay, blue color line represents the wave propagation so this is wave moving from left to right the red tidal particle is moving up and down so this is actually the vibration of matter or particle it doesn't matter lah, okay whether if we are saying particle or we are saying matter Okay, so this vibration, all right, the vibration is actually moving up and down, which is actually at the y-axis, and then a wave is propagating from the left towards the right at the x-axis. So the movement is actually 90 degrees towards each other, or we will use the word perpendicular towards each other. So here, this is how the definition of transverse wave comes in. Okay, the wave propagates to the right, spring particle vibrates up and down, so they are perpendicular towards each other. Okay, so the type of wave for this, okay, the movement, right, show the direction of vibration of the colored thread and the direction of the propagation of the wave. So the direction of the color thread is actually from left to right, and then the particles are moving up and down. Okay, particles are moving up and down, the wave is propagating left from left towards the right and this is an example of transverse wave okay transverse wave direction 
is the definition is the direction of the wave the sorry, direction of the spring wave is perpendicular to the direction of vibration of particles or to be more exact this is the definition okay transverse wave is a wave whereby the direction direction of vibration of the particle in the medium is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation of wave okay so transverse wave the keyword is perpendicular longitudinal wave the keyword is parallel okay transverse wave example would be water wave and also light wave because in this chapter for form four light uh form four wave chapter we learn again about three types of wave sound light and water so transverse wave example is light wave we have water wave. And obviously one more, lah, the last subtopic, electromagnetic wave. So when you see the word, the, sim, uh, the word EM, I'm actually talking about electromagnetic wave. And longitudinal wave would be sound wave. Okay? So up to here, are you all right? Regarding transverse wave and longitudinal wave, I hope okay. No response means consider okay. Hi guys, today I just want to show you a demonstration of transverse and longitudinal waves using a slinky. Now, transverse waves, the direction of energy uh, is going to be going forward. So that's the same with longitudinal waves as well. The energy is going to go this way. But with a transverse wave, the medium, so in our case, the slinky, which is what the wave is going to travel through, is going to be moving perpendicular to the direction of energy transfer. So uh, let me give this a go. So you can see the pulses or the waves are moving from the left to the right. So the energy is moving from the left to the right, but the actual slinky itself is moving perpendicular to the direction. Now another kind of wave is a longitudinal wave. Now with a longitudinal wave, the medium, uh, again which is the slinky, uh, moves in the same direction as the energy transfer. So the energy is moving in this direction. Our wave is going to be, or the, the medium, the slinky, is also going to be moving in this direction. So this is a longitudinal wave, like sound is also a longitudinal wave. So in this case, you can see that there's a, there's a part where the wave gets compressed and a part where the wave gets rarefied uh, and that these pulses move along in the same direction that the energy is flowing. So that's a longitudinal wave, like that. That's a transverse wave. Okay, bye for now. Okay, so that's the conclusion on the two types of wave that we focus on, right? Longitudinal wave, a wave in which the vibration of the medium is parallel to the direction of the propagation of wave, example, sound wave. For transverse wave, all right, it's a wave which the vibration of the particles in the medium is perpendicular to the direction of the wave, which is water wave, electromagnetic wave, light wave. Okay, uh, remind me to show you guys the slinky spring again. And suddenly I remember Imran got a slinky spring last time. So uh, how do you actually recall? For me, I just found one particular method. I found a method for us to recall. Longitudinal wave is parallel from the spelling of longitudinal. All right. So when you see longitudinal, we have double L inside the spelling of longitudinal and parallel is have triple L inside, but for transverse wave, don't have. So longitudinal parallel wave, right? The wave vibration, sorry, vibration of the medium is parallel to the propagation of the wave. Okay, um, so again, longitudinal wave, vibration of the medium is parallel to the direction of propagation of wave, but for transverse, it is perpendicular to the direction. So please remember this and please remember the 
type of wave that corresponds to longitudinal and transverse wave. Uh. So sound wave is longitudinal, water wave, light wave, electromagnetic is transverse wave. Okay. All right. So let's proceed with the characteristic of wave. Okay. Characteristic of wave, we have a few characteristics that we have to emphasize. Sorry for the typo again. Um, I haven't go through it properly. So we have wave fronts, amplitude, wavelength, period, frequency, and wave speed. So characteristic means how we're going to describe the wave. So a profile of water wave in a pond, for example, like this, we can see that what changes Okay, because after this, we have a few phenomena of water wave, all right? Um, and how are we going to describe the phenomena? How are we going to describe the changes of the wave characteristic? is based on wave fronts, the amplitude, the wavelength, period, and uh, frequency, and then the wave speed. So... Let's play a video for a while. Okay, we can see that we have someone surfing up on the water wave. Okay, to me, not very quite. Okay, so we want to emphasize on first thing wave fronts wave fronts is actually a uh, dark and bright lines which is called wave fronts is a imaginary point okay so again this definition not so good okay so when we see from water waves for example this Okay, this is the side view, but if we were to look at the top view, we will see like this. We can see bright and dark, bright and dark, which corresponds back to the wave going up and down, up and down. Okay, this crest, this position here, whereby we see that the wave is moving away, this top part position, all right, is what we know as wave fronts. So wave fronts are an imaginary line that connects all points and it will move together so this particular white line is actually a wave front the black color one is also considered as a wave front it's just an imaginary line okay so wave fronts are lines joining all points vibrating at the same phase or the same position from the source of the disturbance Okay, wave fronts of both transverse wave and longitudinal wave are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So, wave fronts for both transverse and longitudinal are perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation. Meaning means, okay, we have water waves over here. The wave is moving from left to right, and the wave fronts is moving perpendicular. Okay, the wave fronts are all these lines. It's moving perpendicular to the direction of the wave, even for sound wave. Okay, sound wave we see if from the side view. Okay, I should show the graph instead. It's actually moving up and down. All right, the wave is actually moving up and down. So this part is the is the wave fronts. The top lines are all the wave fronts. If we look at the particles, the particles moving away, this line, the imaginary line that's moving away, that is spreading the energy away from the source of the disturbance, that is considered as a wave front. Okay, there are two types of wave front. We have a circular wave front and we have a plain wave front. Circular wave fronts would be what we see here. All right, circular wave fronts move in a circle. Okay, but how does a uh, plane wave fronts look like? So I'm going to show you an example of plane wave fronts. Single source. Okay. 
Okay. So this is a plain wave. All right. All this black color line. Let me take this away. Okay, this is a plane wave. Plane wave run. The black lines and the white lines, it is moving together. Okay, when it moves together, this is a plane wave run, whereby this is a circular wave run. So this is the difference between it. Okay, this one is moving in a circle, so it's called a circular wave run. But for this situation, this is straight. So that's why it's considered as a plane wave run. Okay, so... That is what wave front is, okay? And the direction of the propagation is always 90 degrees. It's very important that you know this because later on we will have to draw. So uh, when we come to drawing part, then only I'll teach you guys step by step on how to draw that, uh, that okay? Then a few other characteristics of wave. Number one, okay, I'm going to use back my old slides then. Um, vibration, wave is being created by a disturbance that vibrate or oscillate. So it's a movement from one extreme position to the other extreme position and then back to the original again. For example, like this. It's moving from one extreme end to the other extreme end. So this is a vibration or oscillation. Okay. Then amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position. Meaning means if I were to use this situation back again, pausing it my amplitude is from this equilibrium position up until this maximum point okay you see amplitude's definition is the maximum displacement from the equilibrium position so equilibrium position is this middle line what does equilibrium position actually means equilibrium position is the original position where the 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 particles or the matter is resting all right, it there's no disturbance of whatsoever, it is resting over there, so it's considered as an equilibrium position. Okay, then if I were to vibrate it, okay, if I were to vibrate it, it will vibrate up and down. So the equilibrium position is from uh, sorry, the amplitude is from this line up to the maximum point, or from this line down to the minimum point. Okay, because the definition of amplitude is the maximum displacement. Remember, displacement is a vector quantity. So um, it can go up, it can go down as well. So maximum displacement from the equilibrium position, it can go to the top, it can go to the bottom part, all right, to the maximum position or towards the minimum position is considered amplitude as well. So amplitude is related to the loudness of sound and the brightness in the light. Later on, we will emphasize on it. Now, amplitude is a physical quantity. Okay, amplitude is a physical quantity. So its SI unit is in meter. Why? Because amplitude is maximum displacement. The SI unit for displacement is meter. So amplitude SI unit is in meter. So take note on that. Now, wavelength. Wavelength is distance between two adjacent points on the same face of a wave. So here, wavelength is another physical quantity. Its definition is a distance. So wavelength's SI unit is also in meter. Okay, so using back this picture, all right. So from the top position here, all right, this is also known as a crest, all right. So from the top position to this position from here to here that is known as a wavelength let me see if i can draw it again okay so from here this position to this position because they are at the top this position is known as a crest all right, the maximum position of a wave is known as a crest. The minimum position of the wave is actually known as a troll. Yeah, I hope I spelled that correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So from a crest to another crest, this is known as a wavelength. All right, from a crest to another crest, that is known as a wavelength. Even if, okay, even if, from a troll 
to another throw that is also considered one wavelength. As long as the distance is, the definition is distance between two adjacent points on the same face. Same face means both is at the crest or both is at the throw, even if it's equilibrium position. Okay, the signs need to be the same. So for here, if let's just say from this position to here, all right, it must be the same position. So from this point, from point A, B, C, it has to be, this part is going downwards. So B is not considered as the adjacent point. Because at position B, the particle is actually moving up. So only at position C, all right, it is going downwards also. A and C is considered two adjacent points. So the distance between A and C is also considered as a wavelength. Okay, so I hope you all can understand. Now this is actually for transverse wave. If it is for longitudinal wave, Okay, if it's for longitudinal wave, here is a compression. This part is a compression, rare fraction, compression of the wave, rare fraction and compression back again. So the distance between two consecutive compression is also known as a wavelength. Or the distance between two consecutive rare fraction is also known as a wavelength. Okay, so here amplitude maximum displacement from equilibrium position SI unit meter okay wavelength distance between two adjacent points of the same phase on the wave is also uh has a SI unit of meter okay this is not written here but if I'm not wrong it's inside your textbook okay so amplitude and the wavelength for now next is here okay we have Let's go to frequency first. I'm going to start with frequency. Now, frequency is the number of wave produced in one second. Meaning means... Where is my simulation? Clear this off. And I'm going to replay this again. Okay. So, you see, this... Frequency is 1.5 hertz. Let me put 1 hertz. 1 hertz means in 1 second. In 1 second, it will complete one complete oscillation. So going up, down, and up again, one complete, circuit, uh, one complete oscillation happens in 1 second. So that's the frequency. As the frequency increases, it will move even faster. Okay, as the frequency increases, it will move even faster. Okay, so frequency is the time, uh, sorry, it's the number of oscillation in one second. And here, I also want your attention on one thing. How do we change the frequency? Okay, so how to change the frequency would be the frequency comes from the disturbance. So or the source of the vibration, the source of the disturbance, the source of the oscillation. So in order to change frequency, it is actually to change the source. So what will affect the frequency? The source of the vibration will affect the frequency. So please do take note here. Why later on when we go into the phenomena, it's very important to identify what change, what change in that situation. So here, frequency will change if the source of the vibration changes. If the source of the vibration doesn't change, then it will not change the frequency. Okay, so let me go back here. Okay, so frequency is number of wave produced in one second. SI unit of frequency is in hertz. Okay, then next is period. Okay, I'm sure from 4 and from 5, you already get used to the word period. Period is the time taken for one complete cycle or one complete oscillation. Okay, 
uh, if you recall the pendulum experiment in Form 5, you would just recently did your uh, inertia experiment, all right? The time taken for the pendulum or the jigsaw blade to move from one side towards the other end and then coming back again, that is considered as period. The time taken to complete one cycle, all right? So that is period. And SI unit for period is in second. So you would actually notice the similarity or the, the, the relation between period and frequency. Okay, period is the time taken for, uh, sorry, time taken to complete one oscillation. Frequency is the number of oscillation or number of wave produced in one second. So frequency and period, the first formula for wave is F equals to 1 over capital T. This is the first formula for wave so far. Okay. And period here, unit is second. Okay. So frequency SI unit is hertz and another unit is second negative 1. Okay. So that is the relation between period and frequency. Okay. I'm going to explain wave speed and I'm going to stop for today already. So wave speed is a measurement of how fast a crest is moving from a fixed point. So let me just quickly get something. Okay, I don't like that. Okay, so here, if I have a wave, Okay, my wave is not very nice, but hopefully you can understand. Uh -huh. So the distance between two consecutive crests is actually a wavelength. Okay, and then uh, that's the distance for one complete oscillation also. Wavelength is also the distance for one complete oscillation. Then next is actually period. Is the time taken for one complete oscillation. Wavelength is the distance for one complete oscillation. So in Form 4, Chapter 2, speed, all right? When we talk about speed, speed's definition is distance over time. So when we're talking about wave, the distance that we're going to talk about is the distance to complete one oscillation, which is wavelength, okay? So in wave speed, to get wave speed, meaning means how fast the wave is actually moving, the distance for one complete oscillation is a wavelength. And then the time to complete one oscillation is a period. So therefore, wave speed symbol V is wavelength over period, which is capital T, okay? And then also the first formula in wave is frequency is the inverse of period, okay? So if you can see over here, T is at the bottom, same thing, T is at the bottom. So if I substitute this symbol into this equation, I get V equals to F lambda. So V equals to F lambda is the formula for wave speed and this is the second formula in wave okay so the SI unit for speed is actually meter okay and then uh, time is actually second so the SI unit for wave speed is obviously meter per second same SI unit for uh, speed as well okay so I think I shall stop up to here so far. All right, any questions? So I have covered regarding what wave is. I have covered the types of wave and then the example of wave. And right now I have already covered the characteristic of wave. So I hope the form four you can understand when we go to class after the heat chapter, we will do some examples. Form 5, I hope that this is a refresher course for you guys. So before we end, okay, I want uh, all of you, right, all of you, if possible, to 
type inside the chat box. Tell me two things that you have learned today. Think back at what we have. How do you define oscillation in wave? Chong Wei's question, how do you define oscillation of wave? What do you mean define oscillation? What makes an oscillation? Chong Wei, what time did you come in? <laughs> okay, Chong Wei's question asks, uh, what is oscillation? Oscillation, okay, very, very quickly. Let me show the Chong Wei for a while. The rest of you, please type what are the two things that you learned today. Yeah? Okay, Chong Wei, oscillation is a disturbance. So for here, for Chong Wei's situation and for whoever that is actually late. All right, a disturbance from this particular part, okay, is moving up and down. So this is the source of the disturbance or the source of the oscillation. And oscillation means going up and down at the same position, okay? moving up and down uh, at a single position so this is a disturbance this is a vibration this is also known as an oscillation oscillation means that for example at the equilibrium position i'm moving towards the right and then i'm going back to equilibrium and then i'm moving back towards the left so i'm oscillating to and fro it's like your pendulum the other time when you do your experiment the pendulum is actually moving back and forth all right that's considered as an oscillation okay chong i hope i answered your question Right, the rest of you, before you actually leave and before we end today's class, please tell me what are the two things that you learned from my lessons today. All right, if you have already typed, uh, we can actually close, we can actually end the class already. So those of you who have already typed, you can switch off and prepare for tomorrow's school already. All right, I shall see all of you tomorrow. The rest, please do share with me whatever that you have learned today. And that's all for my class today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul Leung.